On all sides of Germany, there are development projects showing a great deal of optimism for the future. To the south, in Switzerland, there was much rejoicing as the breakthrough was made in what will be the world's longest rail tunnel, the 57-kilometer Gotthard base tunnel under the Swiss Alps. To the north, Denmark, a nation of bridge builders whose latest generation of engineers constructed the Ersons Bridge and the Great Belt Bridge, has reached an agreement with Germany to begin constructing a fixed link across the Fehmarn Belt between the two countries. The campaign for such great projects is being spearheaded by the La Rouge Movement's representatives in Denmark, the Schiller Institute and its chairman, Tom Gillisberg. Well, the Fehmarn Belt Bridge Project is a 19 kilometer long bridge to the cost of 4.5 billion euros, which would connect what is now two dead ends of uh, Denmark and Germany, respectively. Uh, uh, the Fehmarn in, in Germany, which is not much developed, Lodern Fels, the region of Denmark, not much developed. By making the Fehmarn Belt project, you not only shorten the transportation time across the belt dramatically, but you will also, as seen through the experience with similar projects in Denmark before, you not only have a lot of workplace being created by the project itself in a, in a period of time where you build it, but over time you also have economic activity, construction and so on that will be increased. Now this project in itself uh, will not do the trick. This should have been built a long time ago, uh, as uh, was originally the plan that was conceived by, by us and others uh, back in the 1980s. Uh, now it's finally been decided it's going to be built in 2012 according to these plans. So that's great, but as we've been emphasizing, at the same time as this is being built, you also have to build a new tunnel between Denmark and Sweden, Helsingborg, Helsingør, in order for all of the rail traffic, cargo traffic, to go on rails, and not over the Øresunds Bridge to Sweden, which is already congested, but through a new passage between Helsingborg, Helsingør, and then down over the Fehmarn Belt Bridge. Now at the same time we have a much bigger project which has to be immediately started internally in Denmark, so the so-called Kattegat Bridge, which would directly link up Sealand and Jutland and avoid what is otherwise unbelievable problems with traffic congestions that will come, but which will also make it possible to have a true high-speed uh, infrastructure net internally in Denmark that with the use of modern maglev technology you would be able to access uh, Copenhagen from any parts of Denmark in under one hour basically, all the major cities. Then we said, this is great, let's do this in Denmark, but let's expand it. Let's include Sweden, let's include Norway over these, uh, the, the new Helsing, uh, Helsingør, Helsingborg connection. Let's have the maglev go to, to Stockholm, to Oslo. Let's at the same time over, extend it over the Fehmarn Belt Bridge down to Hamburg. That way we have a Northern European maglev infrastructure net, which would, which would mean that you would be able to travel much faster on train between the major cities of Northern Europe than you can do today on plane. Of course, the most valuable cargo of all human beings would be the primary users of this connection, but the maglev is a fantastic invention which could also means you could also use it for uh, uh, high value goods traffic, etc, etc. And thereby you would actually have a way out of the mess where everything right now has to be put on a very few highways which get very congested and which really uh, is, is a great impediment to the economic development of the whole region.
the way this thing is run, it's the same people, for instance, in Germany, like Saracen, who, are, who shuts down projects, who make sure no money is given for economic development, for big infrastructure projects, and thereby increases the unemployment, which then, at the next turn of the road, stand and say, oh, but look at how bad the economy is, look at how much unemployment we have, now we've got to kick these foreigners out. So it's, it's, it's really a sham, it's a swindle. And it's all based on, on these financial circles uh, uh, having uh, a view of man not as a, uh, not as a co-creator of the universe, but as something that should be a slave for them. Once you begin to actually put human beings into productive employment again, once people are able to, to get a job and contribute, no matter what the color of skin, no matter what your background, as long as you're willing to use your talents for the general welfare, then that totally changes. Then the people you see as, a, as, as something bad, you know, they have a different color of skin and they don't contribute, they steal from your future welfare. They suddenly become your partners. They're suddenly people that just as much as you contribute to build up the wealth of society in general and thereby secure that we can all have a good retirement, that we can all have good health care, that we can all uh, get a good education. Well, now is the time for Germany to again regain its true character and its true role as a leader in science, in development, in construction, in, in showing itself and the world that, uh, that we can build our way out of this. Uh, yes, we need the Fehmarn Belt Bridge, we need it quickly, but we do not need that as a standalone monument. We need that as the beginning of a huge, of a long row of big projects uh, whereby not only Germany becomes a lot richer and a lot more exciting place to be, but which also makes it possible for Germany again to, to take its, its rightful role as uh, uh, the industrialist, the scientist, the engineer of the world to rebuild Germany but take that as a, big, as a starting point for becoming a force to transform uh, the whole world through these kind of big projects.